Okay, so we've got our image sort of set up the way we want it. it you know, your masterpiece is done, you're prepared uh, for it. Remember, I've done this piece very quickly to try to make it, um, you know, uh, just show you guys sort of the basics of how to do it. But you want to make yours, you know, an amazing piece. So once you're done with that, um, we need to make this ready for stencil cutting, right? Because we're going to have to go in and hand cut all of this stuff, which is going to, of course, make it difficult. And one thing you've got to do is you have to go in and make any complex shapes that are that have like a knockout area in them, you're going to have to tie those off somehow to make those into a stencil. And so I've gone ahead and done that to the red area here, uh, and you can kind of see that the stencil um, is already there. There's probably stencil typefaces you could use just to start with, although they might look kind of stupid. So um, you might want to you want to make sure you're choosing a typeface that makes sense um, to be to use for this. So if it's like a really scripty typeface, that might be not the best choice, right? So you're kind of constrained by the limitations of the media that you're using. But um, but when you're ready to do this, you just want to go in and look for any place where, again, you have like an interior area that's going to just, when you cut the stencil, it's just going to fall out. So typefaces are the best, uh, best thing, but if you have a really complicated shape that has an internal area that's, um, that's uh, um, going to end up falling out, you want to fix that as well. So so usually it's the type that we need to do. So you can see here on my A and my R are going to be problem areas. If I just cut the stencil out now, when I cut out the area around the A, it's going to um, basically fall out. This central sort of area of the typeface letter is going to fall out. So I'm going to have to tie that tie that in somehow with a stencil shape. So I'm going to show you a fast, cheap, easy way to do it um, just by hand because that's kind of what we're doing here is the basics. So if you click on you know your layer again you want to make sure you're working on the light, right layer I have my other two layers um, locked and I select my typeface if I go in there and let's say I tried to add like if I tried to cut this up now and add something to it it's gonna um, not let me do it because it's a typeface and so what you need to do is you need to change the the pro um, basically change the illustrator file so that your type is no longer a editable typeface but it's turned it into vector shapes so this is a great thing to do any time that you're not sure that you're sort of sending it to a printer that's going to have the, the font that you're using. Um, so it's a great thing to always do your files before you kind of pre-flight them and export them out. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have your typeface selected. That typeface, you want to go up to your um, type and you want to go to this one that says create outlines. So again, that's select a type, go up to the type menu and then go to create outlines and that'll you can see that now that's changed that into a series of editable shapes so if I zoom in on this um, and I just grab one of these things they're all grouped together now but if I grab like one of the points with the white arrow tool I can actually adjust that right and I can I can warp it and change it and change it around if I want to so that's something that you can actually do that's a pretty fun way to kind of customize your typeface as well but what we want to do is now that we've got those things selected we want to erase we want to go in there and erase away um, the some. We just want to create some spots where it's going to um, sort of attach to our stencil. So again, you want to make sure you have the typeface selected. That's important, and you want to go to the eraser. So you want to go to the eraser tool. If you don't have it selected, it doesn't work quite as well. And we can change the brush size of our eraser again the same way we do in Photoshop by just pushing the bracket button. And I'm going to kind of make a big a big space because I gotta cut this thing out by hand, right? And so if you hold down the shift key, it's gonna make a straight line or a, a horizontal line there, right? So um, so that could be one way to do it, or you could just draw it freehand. But we're just gonna draw in, and you can see how it's cut that up into these different uh, shapes that will allow us to uh, cut that out by hand. So now when I go to cut these, I can actually, um, you know, I can actually see where I need to cut so that I'm able to have the um, this will stay. This will stay in place and I can, this will be a stencil part, an opening in the stencil, this will be an opening in the stencil, but everything else is going to be um, uh, sort of, um, everything else is going to be basically uh, attached to the paper still so we can use it. So so we want to go in and do that to everything here. I don't need to do it to the T, right, or the I, because there's nothing in there that's going to fall out. The N is, shape, is safe, the U is fine, the F is fine. It's just these type uh, letters that have a interior s sort of shape that's not going to stay attached. So once I get all of that done, once you go in and adjust all of that stuff, now all you have to do is you have to go to the printer. So I'll walk you through how to print this in our next tutorial.